for coming tonight. Um, I'm Charlene Stevens. I'm the city administrator for the city of Cottage Grove, and I want to welcome you to the city's second annual State of the City Address. It's my honor tonight to introduce Mayor Myron Bailey. Mayor Bailey's love of Cottage Grove and the people who live here is evident through his long history of service to this community. He is currently serving in his 10th year as mayor, having first been elected as mayor in 2008. Before becoming mayor, he served four years on the city council and eight years on the planning commission. He's also been a member of the city's economic development authority for a dozen years and is currently also a member of the Metro Cities Board of Directors and the Youth Services Bureau Board. Tonight, he'll be sharing some highlights from last year as well as what is planned for the coming year. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Myron Bailey. Thank you. I gotta do the cheaters. <laughs> Uh, thank you, City Administrator uh, Charlene Stevens. Uh, good, good evening and thank you for joining me at this year's 2018 State of the City Address for the City of Cottage Grove. A warm welcome to each of you here in the council chambers and those that are watching via Facebook Live or on cable. It is my pleasure to be here this evening to celebrate the success, or excuse me, the successes that have taken place in our community and to talk about where we're headed. I would, though, like to start out by recognizing some distinguished guests that are here in attendance this evening. First of all, we have Representative Tony Jurgens. We have Representative Keith Frankie. We have Washington County Commissioner Carla Bingham. We have my fellow colleagues on the City Council. We have uh, Councilmember Steve Dennis, Councilmember Dave Thede, Councilmember Wayne Johnson, and Councilmember Larray Mills. And I believe we have a few members in the audience from the Cottage Grove Area Chamber of Commerce. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge and thank the South Washington County Bulletin and the South Washington County Telecommunications Commission for their role in helping us get the word out about where we're going and what we're doing in Cottage Grove. I am proud to stand here before you as your mayor. I am proud of the great work being done by this city and excited for what yet, what's yet to come. Over the past year, great progress has been made toward our strategic goals of positioning the city for growth, making Cottage Grove a recreation destination, and engaging the community and forming a vision. Last year was an exciting year of progress, and I want to take just a few moments to reflect back as this gives us a chance to remember and celebrate all that we have accomplished. In 2017, our community grew as we welcomed many new families who moved into a variety of new homes that were built here in Cottage Grove. Along with the many road construction projects that improved safety and ease of travel throughout our community. All while paving the way for future growth in retail, business, and residential development. Construction began a new central fire station to replace a station that was not adequate to fulfill the needs of our 24-7 fire and medic service. We built two new tr temporary treatment water facilities and an expedited time frame in response to the announcement of the lowering of the health-based values for PFCs in municipal drinking water put out by the Minnesota Department of Health. We opened the largest inclusive playground in the state, a five-year project that was possible because of the tremendous support of many residents, local volunteer groups, and various businesses. We also had many new businesses open, including Junction 70 Grill, Ace Hardware, and the much anticipated Hy-Vee, just to mention a few. We also saw the relocation of Bella Pizza, a local business owner, and the expansion of Carboni's, also another local business owner. We added over 164 million in economic development permit value in 2017, which is one of the largest years ever in the city of Cottage Grove. And we can't forget about the My Future Cottage Grove project, which saw thousands of residents sharing their dreams for the future of our great community. 2017 was indeed an amazing year. And 2018 holds the same promise as there are many exciting things on the horizon for Cottage Grove. I invite you to pause for a moment and peek into the future with me. I want you to imagine a city with a community center where people can gather for companionship and recreation. A city that celebrates its diversity with a food and fun festival, an event that embraces different genders, age, ethnicities, and creating a stronger community. A city where park benches to quietly enjoy nature on a small island nestled in the Mississippi River. A city that offers a mix of housing to fit the needs of young adults, families with children, 
empty nesters, seniors, and everyone in between. A city with parks that are all connected to one another, providing easy and safe access for everyone. A city that explores ways to connect with its residents using a variety of digital tools. And a city that continues to thrive with additional retail and restaurant options. Okay, now let's return to the present. Those seven possibilities I just listed are all ideas that came out of the My Future Cottage Grove Community Engagement Project in 2017. These ideas are representative of everyone in our community. Even our teens got involved. They were specifically the ones who suggested the Food and Fun Festival as they wanted the diversity of our city to be acknowledged and celebrated. Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. Last year, this community shared their dreams. This year, many residents have stepped forward to begin working on making those dreams a reality. In fact, many of the groups have already begun meeting, and I should mention there is always room for more volunteers to get involved. As mayor of this city, I share many of the same dreams for Cottage Grove as you do, including seeing economic growth in our community. Our economic development efforts include strengthening our relationships with existing businesses and working together to help them grow and succeed. As we move into 2018, we plan to build on the successes of our business retention and expansion program that was launched last year. You'll hear it referred to as the BRNE project. As a result of what we learned from our business community, we are partnering with the school district to develop the future workforce for local employers. Last year, we completed the Alternative Urban Area-Wide Review, known as the AUAR. This was done on a large tract of land just south of the current business park. With the completion of the AUAR, businesses that might consider locating in Cottage Grove are assured their development process will be expedited, saving them both time and money. Staff continues to work on att attracting and growing our manufacturing and industrial business to our business park. Matter of fact, Later this month, you'll begin to hear about another new business coming to our business park. This new business, North Star Streets, will be over 160,000 square feet in size and employ between 40 and 50 people. Entrepreneurs who want to start a business or expand their existing business now have access to free confidential consulting services with our Open to Business program. Many people used this service last year, and we expect even more to do it this year. We'll continue to work to position Cottage Grove for growth. As we grow our workforce numbers, we create more opportunities to add more retail and dining options for our residents. When you think of economic development, you may think it's all about attracting new businesses to town. But frankly, it's more than that. It's including expanding our housing options. After all, rooftops and residential growth create additional opportunities for commercial development. Through the My Future Cottage Grove project, we heard loud and clear that this community wants more diverse housing options. In response, late last year, we completed the Harkness Avenue Small Area Study and rezoned this area to focus on more market rate, high density housing options, providing more marketable opportunities for this land. Developers want to bring different housing options to Cottage Grove, including apartments, villas, townhomes, and small and large single family homes, but all at different affordability levels. In 2018, more housing choices are coming to Cottage Grove, including single family homes in the Eastbrook, Hamlet Heights, Kingston Fields, Wildflower, and Sunny Hill developments, just to name a few. The expansion of Presbyterian Homes of North Square will be the first skilled care facility ever offered here in Cottage Grove. The opening of the new Legends of Cottage Grove Apartments will provide more options for seniors that wish to stay within our community. More homes equals more people, equals more opportunity for commercial development. A little known fact, uh, we are already the 26th largest city in the state of Minnesota today. The city is beginning to see a renewed interest in redevelopment and in reinvesting in our community. Redevelopment will take place on the site of the old municipal pool for financial reasons and lack of use, the pool was closed and filled in a few years ago. Habitat for Humanity is currently looking at the possibility of building three new homes on this site. 
It's a great solution for an old building that no longer serves the community. And we will be welcoming more families to the neighborhood through another affordable option. We could see a new and improved Cottage Grove Library as Washington County has begun discussions on the redevelopment of that library, which is located on Hemingway Avenue. This in turn will start a conversation about planning for the possibility of the redevelopment efforts where the old City Hall Public Safety Building is currently located. In regards to redevelopment, I know we have got various re commercials places in the community that many, including myself, wish to see developed. At times, it appears that nothing is being done. I also want to see these commercial areas developed and thriving, but it takes time with much of the work happening behind the scenes, and frankly, it's out of our control. As more ho housing comes to Cottage Grove, this will make us more attractive to developers. Once again, I will urge our residents to be patient. I am anxiously waiting, like all of you, when we can announce development plans, and believe me, we will. In 2018, work will begin on the Ravine Parkway project. It will include construction of the road, installing utilities, city street lights, and landscaping. The first phase of this project will be worked on between County Road 19 and Jamaica Avenue. This is a very large project at nearly $13 million total. This is crucial to the continued development of the Upper Ravine District, which is lo located in the northeastern part of our city. We have seen a lot of development happening in, in this area in recent years, and other developers have expressed interest but they want to know where the future roads are going to be located, which is why this project is so important to our strategy for positioning for growth. The city and Washington County work together to improve access to the business district uh, off of Highway 61 and County Road 19 to include a new roundabout. And the last piece of that project will be completed when Washington County opens the new entrance to the Ravine Regional Park later this spring. This jewel of a park will be easier to get in and out of as the new entrance will be highly visible right off of County Road 19. Last year, we partnered with Washington County on improvements to County Road 22 from Highway 61 to Hinton. Many of them may know that as 70th Street. Improvements will continue in the future with a roundabout plan for the intersection of Hinton Avenue and 70th Street in spring of 2019. To improve safety, Washington County is adding a dedicated left turn lane on County Road 19 at Indian Boulevard, which is near the Cottage Grove Middle School and Gray Cloud Elementary Schools. With the new construction of the Oatman Middle School underway and the expected opening in fall of 2018, we have also improved the access off of 65th Street to include a new roundabout at the school entrance. With the opening of the new middle school comes new fields and trails for Cottage Grove in the future. There will be two fields dedicated to softball and baseball, two multi-purpose fields, as well as new trail connections. As we work towards our goal of making Cottage Grove a recreation destination, we continue to look for new recreational opportunities for our residents and visitors. Last month, we opened the new cross-country ski trail at River Oaks Golf Course. This 3.2 mile trail takes you around the course where you can experience the peaceful environment with the view of the Mississippi River Valley and you might see a deer or two. On Fridays and Saturdays, you can enjoy dinner at Eagles Bar and Grill once you're done skiing. The Eagles Bar and Grill now offers year-round Friday fish fries and Saturday prime rib dinner specials. Many new, fun, special events are planned at the golf course and the event center, such as craft beer tasting, paint and sip nights, craft shows, holiday-themed dinners, and more. We take great pride in our amazing parks and trail systems, which will continue to expand and, imp and improve. As I mentioned earlier, we did open the largest inclusive playground in Minnesota last summer, and we expect to see a lot of activity as more and more families discover it. Sunny Hill Park will expand to twice its current size. Hidden Valley Park will have its prairie and wetland restored. Forest restoration will continue at Camel's Hump and the landscape at Oakwood Park will be restored to its natural beauty. Our youngest res residents have lots of chances to enjoy our parks with all the programs that are offered through our recreation department, including the popular supervised playground program. This program gets kids out, of the, gets kids out in the park daily and has been proven to be so successful that we're expanding it further this year. 
each season, the ice arena teaches all ages and abilities to skate through its skating school program. In 2018, we ant anticipate teaching over 200 skaters. The ice arena, by the way, is both a destination and an economic development engine. We anticipate nearly two, two excuse me, I almost said 200, 20 hockey tournaments to be hosted there, which brings families from throughout the Midwest to Cottage Grove to stay, shop, and play. One thing that many people uh, don't know about in Cottage Grove is that we have the most river shoreline of any metro area cities. As a way to enjoy the river, we have a number of residents who have volunteered to work with the Parks, Recreation, and Natural Resources Commission to begin creating a plan to program the Joseph Labath Settlers Island, which, by the way, is a small island we own in the Mississippi near Grey Cloud. This was also a recommendation that came out of the My, My Future Cottage Grove project. The My Future Cottage Grove project also showed us there, there is a strong community support for a community center. This isn't something I was surprised by as I've, I've known that this is something that people have wanted for many, many years. I'm pleased to report that the Community Center Task Force has been created and the 18 members have already begun meeting to start discussion on a potential community center. The group will be in contact with Washington County as they work on the Cottage Grove Library redevelopment as there could be a public facility aspect attached to that project. My personal goal is to have something before the Cottage Grove voters sometime in 2019. Volunteers interested in creating a food and fun festival have met to share their ideas of what this type of festival may look like. To me, one of the most exciting things is that our youth came up with this idea as a way to celebrate this community's diversity. The teens told us, again, through the My Future Cottage Grow project, they want to see this community to be all inclusive and frankly, celebrate the next generations. We will continue to look for ways to improve pedestrian safety and the connections between all our city parks, which again, is another of My Future Cottage Grove initiatives. We placed an interactive map on our website where you can provide input on which parks you think should be connected and where, frankly, you think there should be additional bike parks and trails. Your input will help us make the livability of our city even better now and into the future. One of the city's core functions is to provide safe drinking water to our residents and businesses. Last, no last summer, we needed to enact an outdoor watering ban after the Minnesota Department of Health released new lower health-based recommendations for e industrial chemicals in our water, and we had to shut down wells that didn't meet the new standards. We acted quickly to, pr to protect the health of our residents. As I mentioned, we were able to complete the construction of two temporary water treatment facilities for well three and 10 in only 11 weeks, something that would normally take 18 to 24 months. Because of this, we were recognized along with our partner Stantec for the quick action and expedited construction, and we received the 2017 American Public Works Association Minnesota Project of the Year Award, as well as an award from the American Council of Engineering Companies in Minnesota. I know the watering ban was a big inconvenience to this community, and I want to thank everyone for their support during that difficult time. Making sure our residents are safe is one of the many uh, important things we do and our public safety staff, which consists of our police, fire, and EMS personnel, are proud to protect and serve this community. We'll see the new central fire station open later this spring. This 31,000 square foot station will serve our community for many years to come. It will be a state-of-the-art facility and house all the equipment from station one and former station two, allowing our dedicated firefighters to continue to provide some of the best response times around seven minutes in the state. This new station meets the needs of our 24 seven crews and allows us to be proactive in properly serving the anticipated growth of residents and businesses in this community. A grand opening celebration will take place in May and I invite everyone in the community to attend and see firsthand the community's new central fire station. In 2018, we will join many other cities in Minnesota when we roll out RADS online. This is a community online crime map where residents can get a better idea of any crime activity in the area. You'll be able to enter your address and any crime activities in that area will be shown. 
The other nice thing is this will also help our police officers do their, more jo do their jobs more efficiently. We are continuing to pursue the Hero Center, which will be a regional training facility for police, fire, and emergency workers. It will be located near this current city hall site. It is a much needed facility as training space for public personnel, safety personnel is limited in the Twin Cities. Cottage Grove has been working in partnership with the city of Woodbury and the project has already received state legislative approval for 1.46 million in pre-design and design funding. We are seeking additional funds from the state to build the Hero Center later this year. In just a few short weeks, we will say goodbye to our current public safety director, Craig Woolery, who will retire after serving this community since 1983. I speak on behalf of the entire council when I say we are very appreciative of everything he has done for this community. Under his leadership, the city's public safety department has grown to be one of the best in the state of Minnesota. We wish him well as he begins his next chapter in life. Cottage Grove Police uh, Captain Pete Kerner has been named the city's next public safety director. Pete has been with the Cottage Grove Police Department since 1992. He is also an active member of the community volunteering with many nonprofits. I know he will continue to build on the department's positive reputation and excellent delivery of service. He'll step into this new role on February 23rd. All of the future projects we have planned and everything we've accomplished to date would not be possible if we did not have a strong financial base. I'm extremely proud to be able to say that we once again received the Government Finance Officers Association's Award of Excellence in Financial Reporting. That now makes 27 years in a row. We were also named one of the top 10 fiscally healthiest cities in Minnesota by the League of Minnesota Cities. Thanks to the continued growth taking place in our community, almost half of our homeowners saw a rate reduction in the city's portion of their taxes in 2018. I know you have pride in this city. Cottage Grove is known for its community values and its quality of life. I hear that all the time. I believe being aware of what is happening in your community helps build community pride. That's one reason we work hard to keep you informed. We want you to be aware of how your tax dollars are being spent, to know about economic development taking place in our community, to, to be informed of the actions your council is taking on your behalf, to getting to know your neighbors, and to getting to know the staff that serve this great community. We also, though, know that your time is limited and you cannot always attend all cities of city events and meetings. In response, we began using Facebook Live for things such as gathering input for the My Future Cottage Grow project, to ribbon cutting and speeches, to fund presentations on our budget. That Facebook Live budget presentation was viewed more than 1,500 times. We will continue to look for more opportunities to use this tool in the future. We've also begun featuring residents in monthly My Cottage Grove videos and introducing you to staff in monthly City Faces videos. You can find them on our YouTube channel. We're revamping the popular Grove 911 video show to make it more relevant to you. But don't worry, Mike and Katie will still be hosting this program. We now have a presence on a program called Nextdoor, which is a private social network for your neighborhood. We are able to share important information with you via Nextdoor, but rest assured the city cannot see your private messages taking place in your neighborhood groups. As part of the My Future Cottage Grove project, we will reach out to residents when we need input on future, excuse me, future digital engagement tools. And finally, you'll see a new and improved city website coming in 2018 that will be easier for you to navigate and find the information you need. As I close, I'm re reminded of another Walt Disney quote. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. That's exactly what we're doing. We have a passion, passionate and dedicated city council and staff that is ready to work hard for the citizens of Cottage Grove to make this city even better than it is today. And of course, we are always open to hear from you on any ideas or thoughts that you may have. Cottage Grove is growing steadily and we're laying the groundwork for even more fun and excitement in the future. 2018 is going to be another amazing year for Cottage Grove. 
and thank you for helping make Cottage Grove a great place to live, work, and play. Thank you.